Veronica, the movie starts in Madrid, 1991, with a girl calling for help because something's wrong. Police find her wrecked home and follow a trail of blood to a scary noise. Then, we're taken back three days earlier, where we meet Veronica, a 15-year-old, waking her siblings after their dad's death. Their mom works a lot to support them. Veronica takes care of her siblings and does chores because their mom is busy. They all have breakfast and prepare for school. Before leaving, Veronica takes a photo of her dad, showing she misses him a lot. They head to their Catholic school. In class, Veronica's friend Rosa passes her a note about something exciting. Meanwhile, the teacher talks about eclipses, mentioning how ancient cultures used them for rituals to summon spirits. After class, everyone goes to the rooftop to see the solar eclipse. Veronica meets Rosa, who brought along another girl named Diana without asking first. Diana recently lost her boyfriend and wants to contact him. The three sneak to the school basement to use an Ouija board. Veronica wanted to talk to her dad, so she brought his photo, but Diana forgot her boyfriend's stuff. They set up the board, put their fingers on a glass, and ask if anyone's there. Suddenly, the glass moves, suggesting a spirit is present. The girls ask the spirit questions, trying to figure out who it is. They ask if it's Veronica's dad, but the glass moves crazily. They ask again, and it points to the sun symbol on the board. While this happens, Rosa and Diana's fingers start burning, so they let go, but Veronica's finger continues. The glass moves, scaring her friends. Suddenly, the eclipse begins, and the glass shatters, cutting Veronica's finger at the sun symbol. Candles fall, and they put out the flames. Diana runs for help, while Rosa sees Veronica mumbling something, which terrifies her. Veronica suddenly sits up and screams. Next thing, she wakes up in the school infirmary. The doctor says she fainted for no reason and asks about her period, but Veronica hasn't had hers yet. Outside, they see the blind headmistress staring at Veronica. Back home, Veronica puts the broken Ouija board in her closet, but it keeps ending up on the floor. She tries under the bed, but her bag still moves. At dinner, her hand freezes up mysteriously. Veronica tries to eat, but struggles to move her fork. Irene accidentally spills milk, snapping Veronica out of it, but she's confused. Later, while washing clothes, Veronica sees bruises on her shoulders, freaking her out. Strange things keep happening, even at night. While bathing Antonito, she hears a loud noise from her room, but her sisters aren't there. Suddenly, Antonito screams from the bathroom. Veronica finds him burned, even though he swears he didn't touch the faucet. As she treats his burns, he tells her he knows it wasn't her fault. Veronica puts her backpack in the closet before bed. In the middle of the night, she wakes to find her closet door opening, revealing her siblings hiding inside. Then, she hears her father's voice and sees him approaching, naked. Terrifying burned hands drag her into bed, but it's just a nightmare. At school, Veronica notices Rosa avoiding her and communicating with Diana. Veronica heads to the basement and grabs her dad's picture. Sister Death appears and asks what she's holding. Veronica wonders how she can see. But Sister Death says you don't need eyes to see. She warns Veronica that what they did was dangerous. Veronica explains she just wanted to talk to her dad. Sister Death looks at the photo and realizes it's not Veronica's dad who responded to the seance, but an evil spirit. She warns Veronica that her siblings are in danger, and she needs to protect them. Veronica tries using a crucifix to command the evil spirit to leave, but it doesn't work. Back home, Veronica reads an occult magazine to learn how to ward off evil spirits. She puts up symbols from the magazine in her sibling's room for protection. Then, a neighbor comes by, complaining about the noise. The downstairs neighbor complains about the noise, suggesting a water leak from Veronica's room. That night, Veronica hears her sister's walkie-talkie ringing. A voice tells her she summoned the devil and must help her siblings. Veronica rushes to their room but finds them asleep. She sees a shadowy figure and realizes the protective symbol is burning. A hand chokes Lucia, but when the figure vanishes, her sisters think Veronica did it. Veronica explains there's something they can't see, and they all sleep together. Later, Veronica hears a noise and sees a shadow behind the glass door. It's their mom, surprised to find mattresses in the living room. The girls say someone entered the house. When they're alone, mom scolds Veronica for filling her siblings' heads with strange ideas. Veronica says mom's never home and admits she played with an Ouija board, hoping to talk to dad. Mom dismisses it, telling her to grow up. The next day, Veronica's sisters wake her up, but then they start biting her arms, and Antonito chokes her. She wakes up to find it was a nightmare, and realizes she got her first period. Cleaning her mattress, she finds a strange burnt mark. Antonito says dad reads to him every night. Terrified, Veronica tells him to shout her name if it happens again. Checking their mattresses, she finds the same burnt mark. 
Frustrated, Veronica goes to the school basement to talk to Sister Death. Sister Death reveals she blinded herself to stop seeing evil spirits, but it didn't work. Veronica says the shadows aren't scared of crosses or amulets. Sister Death says God isn't involved and tells Veronica she must make the spirit lead the way it came and say a proper goodbye. She emphasizes the answer is in books and that what was done wrong must be corrected. Veronica reads an occult magazine that explains how to properly end the session they started. The magazine warns that if they don't say goodbye properly, properly, evil spirits can stick around and they'll have to try again later. Veronica visits Rosa at a party and insists they do the session again to say goodbye, but Rosa and Diana refuse calling it nonsense and Veronica gets kicked out. Finally, Rosa reveals Veronica's whispered message, she's going to die in three days. Terrified, Veronica begs her mom to stay home, but mom's too busy. Upset, Veronica goes home with her siblings, remembering Sister Death's words. Determined to end it, she puts the broken board back together. Veronica gathers her siblings to play a game. She tells Antonito to paint a protection symbol on the walls. As they prepare, Antonito gets bored and paints a different symbol. They start the Ouija board game, asking if the spirit is there, and it is. Veronica says they're saying goodbye, but the spirit refuses. The magazine says they must sing softly to end the session. They start singing, but hear strange noises and creaking doors. Veronica insists they keep singing despite their fear, but the noises get louder. Soon after, the door swings open and the Ouija board breaks again, the glass rolling away. Veronica follows it into her room with her flashlight, focusing on the stained mattress. As she nears, a hand emerges, grabbing her and trying to pull her in. She breaks free and runs back to her sisters. Panicked, she calls the police claiming someone broke in. Then, the burnt spirit grabs her brother and takes him. Veronica follows to the bathroom, but trips and blacks out. When she wakes, she finds her brother safe in the bathtub and carries him. Veronica and her sisters decide to leave together, but she realizes she's not holding Antonito. She tells her sisters to leave and goes back upstairs to find him. Antonito is still in the bathroom, and a shadowy figure strikes Veronica's head. She grabs a piece of glass and cautiously moves forward. She finds Antonito in the closet, covering his ears and calling for help. He doesn't recognize her. Veronica remembers telling him to cover his ears if their dad comes back. Realizing she's been possessed, Veronica tries to protect her brother by attempting to slash her own throat. The demon stops her and chokes her instead. Police arrive and see her being attacked by an unseen force. One officer grabs Antonito, while another calls for paramedics. Outside, Veronica's mother cries at the sight of her daughter's condition. Upstairs, the chief detective finds a photo frame of Veronica, but it burns his hand. Suddenly, the lights come back on, and the detective learns over the radio that Veronica has died. In the final scene, we watch as the portrait of Veronica burns away, revealing the real events the film was based on in Spain. It's explained that an officer certified witnessing paranormal activity. The epilogue tells us two officers got sick and had to leave, and the chief detective was transferred two months later because of the case.